Welcome everyone to the July 2019 community meeting of the I2B2 Transmark Foundation. Uh, my name is Rudy Potenzone uh, and I will um, moderate session uh, our agenda. You can see here. Uh, and um, with that, I will turn it over to Diane Keough, our managing director. Diane. Hi, everyone. I hope um, everyone is having a nice summer and has had some time off or is planning some time off. Um, I know I am. I'm looking forward to getting away myself. So um, I want to jump in um, the agenda today. We're, we're, uh, we're going to talk about the membership program a little bit. Um, we haven't talked about that for a while. Um, we've got a few, few things going on and we really would like to expand that. So I'll talk about that. Um, the the Harvard Symposium I think was um, was a pretty big success. We um, we got a pretty good turnout on the survey, um, the post uh, event survey, and I I want to walk through those um, some of the survey results and particularly the comments we got um, from people. I think they were really really informative and um, and I and I want to hear more um, from people. Um, Rudy will talk about the upcoming uh, Tübingen um, meeting in Germany um, that is is right around the corner, um, which I am I'm pretty excited about. And then we'll have um, an update um, on uh, Transmart and um, from Rudy and uh, I2B2 from uh, Jeff Klan and uh, Mike Mendez. So next slide, Rudy. Let's jump into the membership program. So um, many of many of you on the call um, might actually be um, members of the foundation. Um, this was something that we put together um, when the foundation was uh, was uh, developed um, to really have a group of, of pe core people that um, have used both of the platforms and will um, focus on um, you know coordinating things among the community. And so to date. We have um, we've done a couple things. We had we had a, a couple of meetings. Um, the membership group um, did elect the, the the current board, so that that was one um, thing that the members did. But the most important, I think, was um, developing these working groups um, that we have in place. Um, uh, ETL ontologies, user interface, and use cases, and um, all of all of these these groups have done some some really good work, and they're starting to really organize things and provide information to the community. Um, I think this could really be um, e expanded. Um, so far, there's about 140 individuals from the the community. Um, and you don't have to be a member to be part of these working groups um, at all, but there's 140 people that, that participate in these working groups um, at various times. Um, and as you see the, the survey results, you'll, you'll really see where uh, people are really interested in getting um, the community together and learning new things. So um, Rudy, if you could go to the next slide. Um, so every year, if you remember, we do have a, um, a membership um, annual election. Um, and this is where uh, new mem members can nominate new members um, to be part of the, uh, the membership committee. Um, the, the dates, we're going we're gonna to kick this off and send out the election process uh, September 6th, and we'll close it on the 16th. Um, so we'll have a, an announcement of the, the new uh, members that were um, elected uh, at the community meeting on the 17th. So I, I really um, I really hope people will uh, participate in the election and um, and bring in some some new um, some new people that would would want to participate. Um, I, I said I, I wanted to I wanted to do more with this group. I think I think that the knowledge and the, um, the within the, this this group is is so fantastic that I, I I'm hoping that we can um, recruit. I was thinking a chair of the committee, but I actually think maybe two co two co chairs, maybe um, maybe somebody that's more focused on ITB2 and somebody that's more focused on Transmart, or you know somebody that's U.S. based and or somebody that's you know European based that um, can help um, in really uh, you know energizing this group and and um, and and pulling together ideas of how people can work together. Uh, I, I thought that if we had a couple of meetings a year, I would love to have an in-person meeting, maybe um, situated around an AMIA conference or maybe some, you know, some, you know, big event um, in Europe or something where these people can, um, 
can can work together and obviously everybody's not going to be able to be there in person so we'd have to have a remote um, offering as well but i i'd love if if you're interested in um taking a, a leadership position and and working with us closer and if you have ideas around that i'd love to um i'd love to have people um you know let me know um or if, if you or or maybe part of the the in the, in the membership election process, we'll have something on the ballot to to nominate a leader. You know, so let the instead of people just coming forward or me, you know, trying to tap people on the shoulder, let the let the the members actually um, uh, nominate a, a leader. So um, those are those are some of the ideas that um, that I'm I'm thinking about. And also the the user group meetings that we have, the Harvard meeting and the European meeting. Um, I think you know. We do a pretty good job reaching out and, and getting input from people, but I think we could do a better job. And I think if the membership group itself kind of drove the agenda and um, and helped us a little, I think it would be good. So, um, so that's on the membership committee. And now, Rudy, if you could go to the next slide. I did have one question. Um, was there, uh, there was a question about the board, the, the election of board members this year. Uh, and um, I, I think we've discussed it, but the, you know, the fact that the, the board decided to postpone the elections for the year for new board members. Yeah, yeah that's right. That was postponed for this year. Okay. Um, so the results. So let's jump in, and I'm not gonna, and I, I have a number of slides, I have all of the comments that we got um, on these slides, I'm definitely not gonna read through all of them. Um, I highlighted a few to just kind of pull out some themes, but I, you know, we do post these um, these slides, so if people are interested in the, the raw comments, they're all gonna be here, so dig in and, and look. So you can jump to the next slide, Rudy. Um, so as surveys go, um, you know, we got a 31% response rate, um, which I, I think is, you know, is pretty good. Um, uh, these are uh, how satisfied were you with the event? Um, you know, we had a pretty high uh, percentage of, uh, of people who are, um, actually, if I got to move my little go to meeting bar so I can actually see the screen. Um, I can't do that. Um, we got a pretty high percentage of people who are um, satisfied with the event, so that was pretty good. Um, the next slide, how uh, relevant and helpful um, was it to your job? So I think for the most part, um, we had a couple people where it's not as relevant, but for the most part, people um, felt like this was very, very relevant. So that was good. And next slide, Rudy. So we wanted to know how people thought about the different sessions. So this is kind of a busy slide, but um, the blue is uh, very relevant and uh, red is relevant. Um, so you can see that for the most part, everything felt like it was pretty relevant. People really liked um, the uh, use case presentation and also the, the ACT um, session was very, very relevant um, to the, the people who attended that. Um, so that was that was pretty good. Next slide. So here's the here's the thing that I really wanted to talk about um, here. Um, there were a lot of, and we've you know we looked at the results from past surveys, and not that they were negative before, but this year there was really an upswing in you know positive comments. Um, uh, people people thought it was a good event. Um, they learned a lot, which was good. Um, a lot of good things going on, you know, collaborative environment. So. Um, and again, you can go back and you can read these in in more detail. But there was was definitely a a, a good vibe here. And the next slide um, kind of continues that kind of positive upswing. Um, you know, uh, people liked the webinar access, okay. And I know we had a lot, and there were some negative things about the the you know issues with GoToMeeting and it, it kind of was disruptive, but the webinar access was really, really popular and the fact that the slides were posted, you know, quickly after the meeting, um, you know, uh, you know, people were happier this year, many good things going on um, and, and, and they want training. Um, so you can jump to the next slide, Rudy. 
So suggestions, uh, there was a lot, the theme here was um, it would be, they, 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 want, they want more basic training. The, I think there was a number of new users that came this year, which is like fantastic, um, but they really want to have some working sessions where they can learn things like understanding ontologies and mappings, just, you know, ontologies 101. And I know we have a, a training session um, that, that covered this, which was a popular training session, but I think having more of a, um, a discussion and, and, and session on that would be good. Um, the other thing, very, very important, they, although they, the, the keynotes got high marks, uh, people wanted to hear more use cases. Um, less keynotes, more use cases. They want, they want to understand how people are using um, the system. Um, and more fundamentals, so fundamental training classes. So we, we, we took that to heart and I hope we can, hope we can get the right people even in, uh, in Tubingen to try to set up some of those um, sessions as well. So you can go to the next slide, maybe. Um, obviously, avoid overlap with the precision medicine meeting. Um, we've already have our dates uh, locked in place for next year. Um, I think it's like the second week of June, but it will not overlap with precision medicine. Um, it'll it'll uh, uh, coincide with that, so that will be good. Um, you know it. I, the, the, the fourth bullet, you know, there's a bis, bit of a disconnect or divergence in the products. Um, you know, we really should focus on branding and strategy and messaging um, I, that we absolutely agree with that. Um, and that's something that we, um, we, we promise to do to make uh, it, it clearer um, what our message is and what our branding is and how our, our platforms fit together. Um, Again, approve, improve the virtual attendance. That's something we, we definitely have to work on um, or, or you know, pay a, a professional to, to do a better job. Um, the last comment about a formal poster session, um, that would be something that the, um, the membership group could help with. If somebody, you know, if somebody from the community could take responsibility for reaching out and, and really fostering that, um, because I agree with that. We really didn't have the time to, to really reach out and, and work on that. But people people love these poster sessions. So um, that's another comment. So next slide. Um, you know, people were confused about how you join the working groups. I mean, they sent they sat through these working group sessions and they thought, wow, they learned a lot and they want to be part of it. So, you know, making sure that we're um, were in fact it's something I can work with all of the, the chairs of the working groups to make sure that they're they're promoting that. Um, but if you go to our website and you you know go to get involved, that's you know it's 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 right there. Um, again, more hands on. Uh, they, they want more time to you know longer lunch breaks. You know they want more time to network. So somehow we have to figure out how we uh, maybe we don't pack the the agenda um, quite as uh, much. Um, and, and also some people say, well, you know, it's hard to sit through uh, talking heads for an entire day. So the first day is all presentations, second day is all breakout sessions. So maybe having presentations for half day and breakouts in the, the, the afternoon of the first day um, and do the same on the second day. So it kind of breaks things up um, for people. Um, so those are, those are some suggestions. You know, if people have more, um, def definitely let us know or, or we will, because um, we start planning, you know, the next year's session. Um, you know, right after uh, right after Tubing, and we'll start planning um, the the Harvard meeting. So I think that's you jump to the uh, next slide. I think um, negatives. People felt like the food wasn't as good this year. Um, so that's something we can that's doable. We can figure that out. Um, some of the sessions could have been a, a little better prepared. Um, better coordination among the proj uh, projects. Um, and again, the remote connections. So um, in summary, um, next slide, Rudy, I think I just had a, a one slider. More use cases, um, less keynotes, better food, hands-on, you know, how-to sessions, don't overlap with precision medicine, better virtual attendance technology, um, more time for networking, um, clearer coordination between product, products, um, for sure, um, 
you know, breakout sessions in the afternoon, and potentially a number of people also said that they wanted, they thought that the ACT session could have um, deserved more time. So I'll have to work with the ACT group. It could be that uh, potentially they want to, they want a third day or they want a whole day or something like that. So, uh, so those are our comments. Um, let, you know, let us know if, if, um, if there's anything else that, um, that you want, but we, we do read these comments, right? The, the survey is really important. So, you know, next time you're at one of our sessions and we send out a survey, feel, please let us know what, how you feel. So that was, um, that was the conference. And I think next slide, Rudy. Um, we did have a question, Diane. Could, could you have, could you have, could you get your hands on the date, the actual dates? There's a question about, could we, is, is are the dates set and could we give those now or? Um, I can, it's June, um, I can do it in two seconds. I think it's, it's going to be a Thursday and a Friday. It's, it's probably 11th uh, and 12th. Yeah. 11th and 12th. Yeah. Precision medicine will be the 10th and ours will be the, the 11th and the 12th. Great. Thank you. Okay. All right. So we'll move on. Let's uh, talk a little bit about our upcoming meeting in to begin. Uh, the meeting is set for October 8th and 9th, which is, uh, I think, a Tuesday, Wednesday. Um, Tubingen is a, a small town, very interesting uh, place with a lot of history. Um, one of uh, Germany's oldest universities. A lot of interesting things have happened there. And we're trying to put together uh, a strong program uh, as we move, move ahead. Um, I'm working, we're working closely with uh, the local organizers, uh, as you see here, um, uh, to try to put together a, a strong agenda. And, um, you know, now's the time we're asking, um, you know, for help in getting the, the program together. We do have our foundation events working group, uh, which has been meeting and talking about potential speakers um, and looking at the agenda, trying to take into consideration also uh, the comments that have come back. Um, and um, I'm really happy to say that the registration is now open uh, and uh, there's a link there, also a link on the website uh, and also submission for proposals for speaking uh, or if you have sessions that you'd like to recommend, if you want to bring a poster, uh, we, we are hoping to have a, a, a strong poster session this time as well. And the link is there for submissions for papers. Uh, we haven't put a formal deadline, but the sooner the better. Um, and we will, uh, in uh, late August, start to organize um, the actual sessions and things. So if, if we could get within the next um, couple weeks your proposals for uh, either presenting or your posters, that would really help us uh, greatly. Also, um, I'm also happy to say that we, we have uh, lined up a number of uh, hotels. Uh, this is the, the local team there in Turbingen has been putting this together. Turbingen's not a large town. It does not have uh, a lot of um, hotel space, but uh, they have managed to go through and put together a number of places. Uh, if I, uh, I didn't work. I was hoping I could go to the, um, the website. I think it's trying to go to the website and now it's not letting me do anything. Okay. So uh, on the website, you'll see that there are seven hotels uh, that are close by uh, and they have um, avail some availability for us. Um, and that will be. Um, you know, we'll be able to, you'll be able to book the rooms now. Um, we recommend that you do this soon. Here we go. I'll just show you quickly the web page so you can get an idea that um, the number of rooms available is not huge, but it should be hopefully plenty for us. This is a logistics page uh, that you get to on the, from the website in the to being in meeting uh, piece. And then the different hotels you see here uh, are, you know, five rooms here, you know, five here, 10 here, 15, 
at a couple of these. So, you know, there's quite a few rooms there, but I'm sure they'll sell out quickly. So we're really encouraging everyone to to make, you know, make your, if you are planning to come, make your reservations. Uh, when you do reserve your room, if you say uh, that you're with the group University of Termigan, that's what they're holding these rooms for and with this special rate. So um, again, please everyone, uh, if you're coming, uh, it would be a great time to uh, to book your rooms uh, as we get together. And and I especially um, would like, uh, you know, to, to register as soon as possible when you know you're coming uh, and also to uh, submit your proposals for speaking. So that would be great. So that's what we know about uh, Turbingen at this point. More information will come as we can. Um, I'd like to give now a quick update on the Transmart from the Transmart PMC. Uh, we're working to version 19 release uh, of Transmart. A uh, number of things have uh, been done within the code base. A lot of cleanup and reorganization uh, to make uh, the, the whole uh, you know, future work um, easier. Uh, we have incorporated, uh, thanks to the work uh, of Paul VX Group, uh, the picture API. Uh, and uh, again, that should facilitate, you know, doing integrations uh, going forward. A uh, number of cleanups in the ETL. And uh, it is our, you know, the, the, the goal here is that when uh, the VX Lab uh, releases their milestone two of the I2P2 Transmart environment, uh, that this will be the version of Transmart that they use, and going forward, we will be in lock lockstep in terms of having um, this version of the the formal version of Transmart be uh, one of the components of the I2B2 Transmart environment uh, that Paul Paul's group is is making. Um, the other thing about this is that it should also be a synchronized um, with the I2B2 fully synchronized now with the I2B2 um, uh, core data schema. And uh, the the hope, you know, the thing that we're testing now is the the ability to open up an I2B2 database, uh, either in I2B2, but also in Transmart going forward. So where we are, we're we're in the final internal testing phase, and we're hoping within the next week or two to have the actual beta test uh, available. This will be an open beta once we're we're ready to go, uh, and uh, we will be sending out a notice to everyone, so you'll be able to uh, to test it on a demo site. Uh, that we'll have. So that's where we are with Transmart version 19. Um, now I'm going to invite uh, Jeff Klein and Mike Mendez to to do um, talk about I2B2. Jeff, you should be unmuted. There you are. Can, can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you. Oh, good. Uh, let's see. I'm going to switch, switch to my headphone. All right. OK, um, so I just wanted to provide a quick I2B2 update. We've been working hard preparing for the next release, which we're going to try to have out um, before the meeting in Germany, if we can get everything done in time. Um, the new lean version of the I2B2 core development team is myself, I'm Jeff Klan, and Mike Mendez, who many of you know, he's been part of I2B2 since the almost the very beginning. Um, <clears throat> so we are working uh, hard on improving our visibility to the community and improving our outward focused uh, endeavors. So uh, next slide, please. So the first thing, and this predates me being involved in this particular project, but the I2B2 community wiki has been completely revamped, I think as of sometime last year. So if you haven't been there, do check it out. Um, it's now the home to all things I2B2. All the documentation is there. Uh, the links to download all the code uh, and with, the, with proper updated links is there. Uh, all the community projects, which have been there for a long time, are also available there. And I'm continuing to make small tweaks uh, and add little bits and pieces as need comes up, but the majority of it is, is really, really nicely done by uh, <clears throat> by Vivian and some other people on the I2B2 team. So I, I think it's a really great site to go to, and it actually is, you know, it's fast, it's responsive, and it's the, it's the first place you should probably go if you're looking for I2B2 stuff. Uh, next slide, please. Um, we have also pared down I2B2.org. Uh, we 
you can hit next. I think it'll pop up some little pieces. Yeah, so we, we pared down I2B2.org. We got rid of a lot of uh, dead links that were outdated and we, um, we've made it a kind of a landing page that points to other things. So you'll see a big heading at the top of the I2B2 page for the community wiki, both on the home page and the software page. And those will just link you out to, you know, the, the more appropriate resource to find all things I2B2. But we do still have some stuff there. Uh, if you hit next, Rudy, it'll pop up. We have this, the Hive diagram, which has been there for some years now. It's it's now pared down to actually reflect just the core things that we're maintaining in the core uh, release. Uh, so just the base, basic cells. And there is a link on the site. You can still look at all the other optional cells, but those were... Uh, projects that have you know been discontinued so they're not on the main site anymore uh, and hit next one more time I think this just shows the the link so all the links now you I've just put this here because if you know this page you know it usually goes to PDF documents now it links to the online documentation on the wiki which is always the most up-to-date and it links to github instead of zip files to download because the github actually has zip file releases so we're we're trying to move into a more modern um, development cycle of you know, using these things like Confluence, uh, GitHub, Jira, uh, and other resources like that. Okay, next slide, please. And we are also now gathering Google Analytics statistics to see who's actually visiting our site so we can try to guide people in the right direction and enhance the things that people are using. Um, so the landing page people are going to in the last <clears throat> couple of weeks, this is just for for people's you know, possible interest, this isn't extremely important, but um, people are landing at i2b2.org 42% of the time. A lot of people are landing at the installation docs. That's the you know, the second most popular thing. And then people end up at the community wiki, the demo web client, and actually the i2b2 OMOP community page came out on top too. Uh, everything else was under, uh, I think under 2% of people landed there. We, we're getting about 800 unique visitors per week, so we, we are getting traffic, not just the people on this call, but you know, a lot of people are ending up at i2b2.org and, and uh, related sites. So we want to you know, make it an appealing place to go. Um, okay, ne hit next, please. Um, and so it, one more time, I have a lot of little mini animations on here. So this is, a, this is Google Analytics view of where people are coming from when they visit the site. I think this is just fun to look at. We, we have hubs. It turns out in um, in India, in southern China, I think, in uh, London, and in the Northeast and the West Coast. And um, you know, if anyone's actually interested in this, I'm happy to <clears throat> pull some of these stats and post them somewhere. Didn't seem like quite a uh, the thing an average person would want to see when they went to a wiki, so I didn't post it on the wiki. But I'm happy to supply that if anyone's interested. Okay, next next slide, please. Um, we are also making JIRA more publicly visible. Uh, JIRA is our bug tracking system uh, where we track all of the bugs that are being corrected in I2B2 and all the features we're adding in the next release. So if you go to jira.i2b2.org, even if you don't log in, don't have an account, you can see at least the features that are coming in the next release. So this uh, pie chart is visible to everyone. Um, everyone can uh, submit issues just as it's always been. Um, and all the issues that are reported by the core team, including the features for the next release, are visible to everyone. Um, next slide, please. And uh, I've also created a little document that has release notes for future releases. So you may be aware if you go to the wiki, uh, the top menu has documentation, and you can select release notes in that documentation. There is a release notes for 1.7.12, which is the one coming in the fall. So you can get a preview of what's coming because the feedback we've gotten from people is that they want to know what we're working on now. So you know what to, you know we're doing stuff and you know what to prepare for. Okay, next slide please, or next bullet as it turns out. Yeah, why don't you go through a couple more? <laughs> really sorry about this. Uh, so we, um, I just wanted to highlight we have GitHub. I've been using GitHub for a little while now, but all of our source code is being checked into GitHub um, as, Mike and myself and other core developers are making commits. They are going to GitHub so you can get your the latest daily code and check out what's coming in 1.7.12. No guarantee it'll build um, as well. And we also have, of course, the GitHub release page where you can download the latest stable releases. Uh, okay, next slide. And um, a big effort on 
about five or six people's um, plate earlier this year was redeveloping the web client documentation uh, and, and includes a lot a lot of hard work from a lot of people. Um, so just some some highlights I had I grabbed three screenshots. There's a three minute screencast tutorial. Uh, if you hit next twice, Rudy will get the other two screenshots. Um, oops, I guess. I only get one screenshot. All right, well, I must have forgotten to put the last one in. Um, so there's a screen, three minute screencast tutorial. There's better overview um, portions of the documentation like this one shows you all of the different components of the query tool screen. And so it kind of gives you a nice high level and there's more task oriented teaching. Like your goal is to create a query to uh, find all patients with diabetes with a uh, you know, hemoglobin A1C above six and it'll guide you through that. Um, so I, I like it a lot. Uh, it's still in pre-release form. Um, I'm trying to add the pieces that uh, that the rest of the group didn't have time to finish. So uh, there's little little bits and pieces in there. So if you go through it and you notice anything missing um, or a mistake, please let me know, and I will update that as soon as I can. And definitely check out the new the new web client help. Uh, okay, next slide. So we wanted to spend just a couple of minutes um, on a preview of what's coming in 1.7.12. And this will reflect what, I'm still working on the document for the future release notes. This is gonna reflect that. You'll notice a lot of these things on the JIRA page too. So this is not the only place you'll see this, but we wanted to just give you a quick high level overview of what we're working on. I think I'm gonna turn it over to Mike for a minute, just to talk about some of the core features he's been leading the development of and then uh, at the end, I'll come back and talk about some UI, UI features that I've been that I've been working on. Uh, Mike, are, are you are you there? Because we have to unmute you. Um, I think he might be unmuted. Mike, go ahead. Yeah, you should be open. Okay. Yeah. So some of the new things there that we're go. adding to uh, one seven twelve is so we're doing a, a like a a single WAR file that you can just drop into Wildfly. And then we're also replacing all the property files and the XML files with uh, database entries. So basically everything will be in the database or in the WAR. So installation should be a lot easier. Uh, we did have some old total numps uh, applications in the workbench. Uh, now we're just having uh, like uh, Postgres, SQL Server, and Oracle uh, scripts that will just generate all the total nums. Um, also from the June meeting, we now have the whole act ontology inside of as a in the in the the, uh, the data download for the data section, um, and so all this is right now currently up on the uh, GitHub. So if you want to take a look at it, that'd be great. Any feedback would be great. Also, um, we also added a couple of new authentication models, uh, NTLM two and uh, Okta. So those who are currently uh, out there and if anyone wants to test it out, that'd be great. Uh, so um, yeah, so that's the major features that we're adding. So, and there'll probably be a couple of those we get, get out before we release it in hopefully September. And so, yeah, so some of the stuff, uh, the improved stuff, uh, improved buying terms, uh, Jeff can talk about because that was stuff he did. Okay, yeah, thank, thanks, Mike. Yeah, so our, our focus in the in kind of where we're going in the short term with I2B2 is easier installation and some core features that people are asking for, a lot of refactoring stuff. Mike's been doing some great work with this new authentication methods and the easier installs and the property files in the database. It's gonna be, it's gonna be a, you know, keep the platform fresh going forward. Uh, so I've been working on some features that people have been clamoring for according to who I've talked to in the web client. Um, so uh, yeah, Rudy, you can pop over the next slide. Or actually, if you hit, yeah. So uh, the main thing I want to talk about is this. Whoa, what happened there? Did my mm -hmm. screenshot disappear? That's that's actually kind of unfortunate because the screenshot is pretty illustrative. <laughs> um, weird. There there isn't anything, right? If you hit next, it goes to the next slide. Yeah, go to the next slide. Uh, Do you want well, to bring up yours? We could switch to you to make you the presenter. Okay. Is that All easy? Right. If we, if we, yeah, if we, if we have a minute, yeah, let's do it. Yeah, actually, I have it open right here. Oh, well, that's useful. Sure. Why don't you make me a presenter then? Okay, you should have it. 
Okay. Uh, there you okay. go. I'm not going to attempt to do it any better than that because Fine. I don't want to hear it up. But okay, so this is uh, so the at the bottom in this little uh, <clears throat> bar that popped up, we uh, expanded the left pane of the query uh, tool web client optionally. So when you click the maximize button, you and, and it shows you just the, the large version of everything in the left pane, you can now get to all the tabs. So that is a kind of an advanced user's workspace. Now you don't you don't have have to have those three little panes. You can have the entire left side be whatever tab you're currently working on. And um, you know that one would be better with a live demo, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna attempt that. Even though I, I'm presenter now and I have it running on my laptop, I'm not gonna go crazy. Uh, this one this one we've been spending a lot of time on. <clears throat> this one's improved find terms. So as you know, on the left side, when you uh, search for something in find terms, you get hundreds and hundreds of results back, and you usually get a couple of warnings from the server that you you're getting more than a few hundred results back and it can't show you the results because it's too much. And then they come back to you disorganized and some of them are in folders and some of them are not. And it's very hard to use. So we're trying to clean that up a little bit. We've um, we've grouped it into, on the right side, you can see we've grouped it now into the category. So if you select any category, which is the default for fine terms, you'll get uh, your category split out for you. So diagnoses, medications, and diagnoses ICD-10 are here. Um, then we we sort it by the level in the hierarchy so we can remove duplicates that are deeper in the hierarchy. So for example, you don't see acute gouty arthritis on the right side, but you see it on the left side. And that is probably because it's inside the gout folder. So the gout folder shows up first. And then when the server sees acute gouty arthritis, it doesn't bother returning it because it's already included in the gout folder. And that's an option you can turn off if you want all the results back. But it it reduces the number of results. In this case, it reduces it, you know, to all fit on one screen. But you know, it can reduce it from 500 to 15 terms, depending on what you're searching for. So it's it's quite a, a space-saving feature. And then uh, we kind of just give a give an idea of the hierarchy, so you can see what's at a high level. So uh, gout is at the high level of diagnoses, and then somewhere deeper in the hierarchy is pseudogout and otherwise specified, and then even deeper in the hierarchy is screening for gout. So it doesn't give you the exact spot in the hierarchy. I know that some other UI tools that are built around the I2B2 data model do, and we're actually going to be, Griffin's going to be going through those on the uh, IU, uh, UI working group tomorrow, and um, I'll be demoing this probably. I'll try to do a live demo of this tomorrow on that call. Um, but we decided not to do that because, you know, just to keep everything compact and on one screen. But we are adding a feature that Nich Watanasen developed where you can right click on the term and it'll pull up the hierarchy and open to that particular node in the hierarchy. So that is not in the code yet, but it should be in the code in a week or two. Uh, so that's the improved fine terms um, in maybe more detail than people wanted, I don't know. Uh, and then I had one final slide, but it's not in this PowerPoint because it, it was in a different version. Let me see if I have it. Uh, PowerPoint can't read tilde zero. Rudy, is it easier if I just switch back to you because the last slide is just text? Yeah, but I'm not sure. I'm looking at my deck, I don't think I have it for some reason. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Well, I will find it. Or maybe I can walk slow. Maybe I can just remember what I was going to say. <laughs> there are two two things. One is that uh, we would love to have help with testing the next version of I2B2 uh, because we don't have any dedicated test people right now. Uh, Mike and I will do you know, all the testing if necessary, but we'd love to have some help testing it. And so talk to Mike or I if you're interested in doing that. Uh, the other thing is we want to, um, you know, begin updating the community projects, um, both on the I2B2 wiki and maybe even including some of these 
in ITV2 releases, either as maybe bundles, you've heard us talk about bundles a bit, or maybe just putting some some like web client plugins in the core release. We have some web client plugins in there, but they're rather, um, the, the, the set has been static for quite some time, so we might like to include some different ones. So uh, starting to look at the community page, other working groups are looking at the community projects pages as well. I'd like to kind of get to know what is current and what you know has code behind it versus is a demonstration of research and science that we want to keep on the community page but we don't have any code that we're going to include in the in the release so if if anyone can you know update their community project page and, and wants to talk to me about what should go on the community project page and how it should be highlighted in the community projects as well uh, we want to find ways to give people more um, notoriety, I guess, more credit for doing the work that they're doing also. So ideas about reorganizing community projects pages and updating your community projects would be great. Oh, hey, that is, thanks. I think I did say what I was planning to say. Yep, yep. so that and, and help with the testing. Okay, thanks so much. This is longer than my allotted 10 minutes, but. Um, it's fine, Jeff, that's great, thank you. Okay, um, there was one question along the way or comment. I guess Michelle Morris had mentioned that um, the temporal query wizard uh, tutorial was very cool and that she'd love to see more of those. So, some good feedback. Mm, okay. Okay. I think that now we've come to the open discussion portion. So, if anyone has questions they'd like to ask, um, there was a question, I think, from Gil about does everybody mean everybody? <laughs> um, I think that may have been on the beta testing and the, the answer on the beta testing is that yes, definitely everybody is, uh, is invited to participate in that. If anyone has a question, you can raise your hand or type it into the question window on any of the any of the content from today. Um, there's a question about the um, virtual machine strategy for I2B2 for new release, Jeff. Um, yeah. Did you give any comment about that? Or Docker, I guess? You know. Yeah, so we, we've been discussing this. Uh, currently, w what we feel is true is that people like to have the VMware uh, virtual machine. And so we're going to continue uh, releasing that with the release. Um, Docker is something that we are excited about. We are not sure how excited our users actually are about Docker, um, but Kavi is certainly interested in updating his Docker images and we want to um, make those more visible to the community. Um, it is not currently the plan to make that the official VM release, um, but a VM, that we want to uh, make available to everyone and uh going forward we'll see how see how things evolve if people uh, do as as a you know majority of a community wants uh, docker over vmware then we can consider uh, making that the official path but uh docker has uh, its own pitfalls and difficulties that um i think having done vmware for many many years we've worked through a lot of those um mike do you have anything to add on that Um, no, I don't have anything to add, except that there was talk of actually having two VMs, uh, which is the traditional one that we have, and the second one that has installed. With now, Mike, you're really breaking up. Oh, I, I, I <laughs> you, yeah, you must be in transit. I can, um, I try to fill in. Yeah, we're, we're oh, thinking of releasing. Oh, you, can, oh, you oh, couldn't hear me? Yeah. No, no, you're you're back. Okay, go for it. Sorry. Okay, so there was talk about having two VMs, 
one VM, which would be the traditional one that we've always had. And then the second one would be the one that would have like a UI on it so that you could do development work, uh, testing, and then also uh, would have the workbench you could use that UI also. Did that all come through? Yeah, we got all that. Oh, also, I guess I should mention that um, the work Mike especially has been doing to make ITV2 easier to install is kind of in, re you know, I think it was in partly inspired by these uh, Docker VMs that are very easy to configure. Um, so we're trying to make ITV2 actually easier to install. So you don't necessarily have to use a VM. Um, there, there are other viable ways of getting it installed without you know, spending two weeks doing it. And the new release will reflect a lot of that work. Right. We uh, we got some of the sort of the uh, companion question on uh, Transmart. Will there be a uh, Docker version in, uh, available on Transmart? And it's it's something that we're trying to get to. We're we're trying to get the release finished first. Um, you know, get the beta test going, and then we'll uh, we're we're going to try to get a, a Docker version available. There's also a question of, are, are we considering anything like a Kubernetes release or an Amazon AMI release? At this point, certainly on the Transmart side from the foundation, we're not considering those. Um, have you thought about that at all, Jeff? Hmm. Mm, I I haven't thought about it and I haven't heard discussion about it. About it. Okay, cool. But open to the yeah. idea. Yeah. Can we send the link for tomorrow's UI workgroup meeting? The link to the um, the call-in in information. UI working group. Yeah, I think so. Yep. Could you put that maybe in the uh, chat window? I can do that. Yes. And Stephen Wicks is asking new war file for Transmart pre-beta. I'm not sure what you're asking, Stephen. Stephen, I've un unmuted you if you'd like to ask your question. Yeah, sure. Um, we talked to Peter a couple of weeks ago about uh, doing some development of TM data loader uh, for Transmart 19. And um, uh, what we're looking for is, is there a war file that he's working with that, that has been built that we can um, install internally and start doing our development with prior to the beta? Yeah. Peter, I've unmuted you. Is that? Yeah, maybe it's, it's during the next couple of days. We're just cleaning up a couple of things in there. Super. Okay, good. Thanks. Okay. So, yeah, we'll, we'll then have a war file and you can load the data up with TM Data Loader and, uh, and test it and see how it, it works with the app. Okay, are there any other questions for any of us? Okay, then, Diane, want to close the meeting? I do, but I have one question. <laughs> I'm having a hard time copying that link. Can, um, can who, who actually asked the question about the, the user it's from interview? Gigi. Gigi, Gigi okay. the Pori. Yeah. All right. You can get her the link. Yeah, that would be great. I have your email. I'm going to send that to you right after the meeting. Um, make sure you have it. Um, so I just I want to thank everyone. Um, I think this was a great meeting. I'm I'm really and thanks to um, to Rudy, Mike, and Jeff for um, really getting into the details of uh, the I2B2 and Transmart um, things that are coming. I think that's it's really important that we, uh, we we continue down that path and let everybody know what we're up to. So um, we're always open to questions and comments. So let us know. Um, otherwise, we will um, talk to you all in August. So thanks everyone. Have a great day.